Bueno. All right. Good morning. Whoa. I did not realize that this was so big. And a lot of you. Uh, how many people are not from Italy? Holy guacamole. Wow. How many people are from Italy? OK. All right, rad. This is super exciting then. I guess this is the definition of a global conference, as you were saying earlier. That's fabulous. I had no idea. Uh, OK, so I'm Cassandra, uh, if you didn't know by my name on that slide. And uh, other than me not particularly liking donuts, but that is me eating a Go Donut at OSCON this year, uh, I am a member of the Go team. But before I was a member of the Go team, uh, I was a member of the community. And I, I was a conference organizer. I was a meetup organizer. Uh, I did a lot of emceeing. Most of my uh, shops were Go shops. It was, it was rad. Um, and last year, almost a month ago, I think, I joined the Go team as uh, leading the open source strategy for Go -ing into the future. That was a pun, go wing into the future. I like puns, there's more, don't worry. So uh, this is not the first time I, I have given this talk and if any of you have seen this talk, I do apologize in advance because I kept trying not to do this talk again and then I kept being asked to do this talk again. So when I originally wrote this talk, it was because I, I couldn't think of anything to talk about. I didn't want to just get on stage and do a generic, here's the state of Go. This is where we will be in the future. And this is what generics will be like. No, don't ask me that. Mm -mm. Do not ask me that. Uh, so I, I want to do a talk that's more about what it's like to grow up. And uh, some of you have been here longer than others. Some of you have seen Go change exponentially over the last few years. And so this is what this talk's going to be about. Uh, so now, Go is how many gophers are there worldwide? Who knows this? This is fun. Huh? Oh, no. Up. Five million, I wish. About a million and a half to two million, based on the numbers that, that we can find. There's a blog on it that Russ Cox made. Uh, so yeah, so now we're a million and a half users worldwide. Uh, that's doubled over the last year in terms of user base. So we are also now over 20 conferences worldwide, uh, 170 active meetups, uh, and, and Go's grown exponentially. It's grown more than anyone really could have predicted. Go is also quite firmly one of the top languages that developers want to learn best. There was so many surveys, like I literally have an entire deck of surveys that we were using the other day in a meeting, and it goes at the top of them for wanting to learn, wanting to know more, wanting to use in a transitional sense. And this is rad. Like I was at a conference in London and uh, there was this talk that was given, and it was based, Adita, if anyone knows Adita gave it, and it was essentially saying that Go is the language that the internet is built on. Uh, Go is known as the language of cloud development. This is amazing, but not really surprising because we're here and we're convinced that Go is great. But over the last few months, six months, because it's been longer now, I've done a lot of thinking about what does it mean to scale? What kind of problems have I seen our community face over the last year? And I thought about this because originally when I joined the team, I was like, oh, this is going to be pretty easy, right? Like I'm going to Google now. I'm going to have resources. And because of our growth, I have seen so many more little things come up that I wasn't anticipating. So. I'm going to talk about some problems, OK? Right? We're going to talk about some problems. We're going to be very honest on stage. This is the thing that I do. And I just want to be very explicit. These problems are not specific to our community. 
These are a lot of human problems. And there are things that I would like us to work on as a community because we are human. I think that it's our duty as a member of the GO community to think about how do we want to communicate? What do we want? What kind of community do we want to be? So this is a tenant of GO, which is in, we have like these slide decks that you can use. They're open to the public and this was in there. And I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. Like, Go's features should interact in predictable and consistent ways. That's what you want out of a programming language, right? That's what you want. You do. I, I, I'm telling you. You do. You would rather it be consistent and predictable. But my first thought was, well, we ain't like that. Humans are really messy. We're completely unpredictable and inconsistent. So I was trying to fit that slide in somewhere, and I, I just couldn't. But when you think about it, this quote is very true as well. When you choose a language, you're choosing the community that you want to be a part of. When you choose an open source project, which Go is, that's even more true. So when we look at open source and we look at communities, we really have the greatest impact on what the technology will become. It's not the technology itself. It's the people in this room. Yeah, I'm a fan, so. There, he's, every single one of my presentations, I sneak him in there. So there are a lot of reasons why people love Go. <laughs> Brian, who, is Brian in the room? Okay, he's speaking, and this would be the, the first talk that I'm at that he would actually be on my slide in person, so that would have been really cool. Um, so Brian touches on a theme of energy and leadership and the availability of mentors that you can find in the GOAT community because everyone's so excited. Logan describes something that is more close to my heart, which is this sense of openness and continuous learning, really having education at the core of gophers all around the world. And Carlton touches on something that I've, I've heard from a lot of people, which is a sense of humbleness and in inclusivity within the community itself. I know those are, those are long and I went fast. Too much words on slides, never good. So we can find some consistencies for what we love about Go, but ultimately, we are all very different. Our experiences of negativity or positivity can vary based upon just where we come from. Some people may find one thing great, and some people may find it very annoying. So the, the gist of this talk today is I'm just a little bit worried uh, over, over the last year, this is, these are the things that I have to think about. It's my job, it's literally my job, to be worried. It's very stressful. It, it's, it's my job to be worried about you, about what we are building together and how positive that experience can be for you. As we scale, what will this community become? What will GO become? What if we decide to just let it be whatever? Like, who cares? Why am I giving a talk on a community, right? Like, it's awesome already. It will continue to be good. Why do we need to be opinionated about where we go from here? I gave a moment for you to read the quote there, so I don't have to read it out loud. So Go is doing what it set out to do, and that's wonderful. But in the end, Go is just a programming language. It's built for consumption, preferably mass consumption. The people are the ones that dictate how it's perceived and what its impact will be. Culture and community is the most important piece of the puzzle that is Go. So when I originally wrote this talk, it was like, I don't normally do talks like this, but now I do. And I thought it was you know, semi-ironic that 
you are like, we're going to have technical talks today. And then the first talk that you get is a talk on being nice, um, not a technical talk. So normally, these talks would not have been uh, the norm for me. But I'm going to do it again. And the reason is because I want you all to understand your impact. Every single person in this room has impact. And it's very important that we take that inside and when we're at a conference, we, we think about it. How are we impacting the person we're talking to, the person from across the room? So everyone knows we have a code of conduct. Do you? Raise your hand. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah? Well, that wasn't very many hands. So we have a code of conduct. Uh, and it, it is a general guidelines for how we would like you to behave. Uh, and the, this is a goal, right? This is a goal for the community, that we're genuine, and sometimes awkward, that we're friendly, that we're direct. Those are some things that we would like not to be. Reactive, haughty, exclusive. We look at those and we know what we aspire to be. So we're going to get uncomfortable really quick. And I'm going to ask you to like zone in with me. Uh, don't worry. It's going to be OK. I was going to make you meditate, but I just I don't think that this is the right time for that right now. And I'm way too caffeinated to take you through like a good meditation practice. So instead, I'm just going to ask that you think. All right, you're going to listen to me, which you're already doing. And you're going to just think about the things that I'm about to say. And I want you to internalize it. There's no wrong answer. Give yourself a no judgment zone in your mind. And we're just going to talk about being human, right? This is an exercise and a talk on being human. So let's be aware of how we interact. What do we want? What do we want the Go community to be? What do we love out of this community? Why are we here at this conference? What's important to us? Don't worry, there's more questions. So do we want to be proactive or reactive? Do we want to proactively look at what will be necessary long term? Or do we want to reactively take action based on what's happening on Twitter that day? Are we an exclusive or inclusive community? Are we the kind of community that includes all types of people with all kinds of opinions, even those that differ from our own? Do we take those opinions and think about them? Think about where they're coming from? That someone from a different community that's coming from a different language that they may have something that's different from our own that could be of value? Or do we dismiss their differences? And I think bringing that further, it comes down to, are we an approachable or elitist community? Are we a community where any developer of any background could come and feel welcome and learn Go? Or are we only meant for the consumption of the top 1, 5, or 10%? Are we meant to make most developers productive or only some? And if we are meant to make most developers productive, have we created all the materials for them to be successful? So it could be boiled down to are we nurturing or neglectful? Are we a community that fosters innovation? that sees differences and attempts to become better based upon those differences? Or are we a community that's OK with being different? And if we sometimes have contrarians in the crowd, because there always is, how can we reconcile those differences without being combative? And really, do we want to stick around? Go is about 10 years old. I know that that sounds kind of crazy because 1.0 was six years ago, but the language itself has been worked on for a very, very long time. So do we want to have a lasting impact on developers' lives, or are we just a fad? 
All right, so now that I made you hopefully dig a little bit deep, let's assume, because this is my talk, so I get to like say what we're gonna be for now, um, and you can decide later, but let's assume that we're going to be proactive, approachable, inclusive, nurturing, and sustainable. What's really behind all of that, right? We know it's good. We know, I, th I think we know it's good. I'm gonna say that we know it's good. We know it, it may be a goal that we have. I think that the biggest thing that we can do, and I don't know if this is a made up term or not because I've done so much like reading on this that you sometimes can't remember, but I think it's empathetic collaboration. And I know that's a really loaded word, having empathy, but having empathetic collaboration is working together while being able to really understand someone else's emotions because emotions are what drive humans. Even if we like to think that it's logic, it's emotions. So my theory is that the biggest blocker to this awesome exchange of positivity, I know this is very like, ooh, new age, right? But this awesome exchange of positivity is really the internet. It's not good for this. Because let's be real, people can be really, really mean online. There seems to be often a lack of accountability when it comes to internet communication and communicating online. People think that because they're, and I'm gonna air quote, anonymous, right? Sometimes you are and that's like weird, you shouldn't do that, but like sometimes when you're anonymous and someone's not right in front of you, the normal processing of a mental social contract goes out the window or off the screen and we no longer have that. Things people would never say out loud in an arena like this get typed and said online. And I think we know that can be harmful. For me, the ability to maintain empathy via online communications is one of the most undervalued interpersonal assets that we could possibly have. It's a characteristic and a trait that is very important in this moment, in the moment before we tweet, before we answer a question on Reddit, or give the right answer on Stack Overflow. So why, again, why does this matter? Why am I doing a talk on being nice? First impressions matter a lot. Yesterday, um, I was talking to a developer and they were telling me, oh, I, I, I feel like I'm so new. I've only been coding for nine months. And I was like, mm, that's, I mean, that's, that's legit, right? Like in the Go community, most of the user base is new. So let's just do a, I don't, I don't know about y'all, so let's, let's just see, all right? Who has been uh, coding in Go for more than three years? Okay. More than two years? Okay. Who has only been around Go and the Go community for a year or less? A year or less? There you go, right? So first impressions matter. It's like every day you could be meeting a new gopher and this is the first time they're seeing a tweet, they're reading something online, and when you, when you hear the way someone speaks or you, say the way, you, you see the way someone interacts, that affects what you think about that community and how you will interact with it. So, Everyone has bias, right? We, we talk a lot about the word bias. It's kind of like the word empathy and inclusion. It's super loaded and everyone talks about it like it should be better. Um, everyone has it. It's not necessarily a bad thing, right? We have it because we're human and we have to make quick decisions to survive, or at least that's what we used to have to do. We had to make very, very fast decisions to be able to survive dangerous situations. It is, it is embedded in us. So 
I'm not asking you to rise above all of your survival instincts and, and all of this human nature. I'm just saying, maybe, we could know that it's there, think about it, and then make decisions, and then interact. So, this is the gopher butt. <laughs> Everyone loves this. I think I have it here, don't I? Yeah, I do. I love it. It's okay. We'll get more of them. Uh, but <laughs> that wasn't even on purpose. Like, I'm funny, but I'm not that funny. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, <laughs> this gopher is facing the opposite direction. So I, I randomly asked this the other day. I was like, hmm, I, how does this gopher feel? Right? I mean, it's a gopher, so it feels great. No. Uh, you don't know. And if any of you have seen the evolution of the gopher from Renee's artwork through this conference's artwork, the gopher changes. Its face says a lot. So there's a parallel here. Yeah, if, if, we don't, if you haven't figured it out. Uh, this goes for all of us, right? Like there are a lot of things that we may not know about each other. You've probably made a lot of judgments about me already. I guarantee you, you have. You can say, no, I haven't. Oh my God, no, I, I didn't do that. I'm not judging you. Yeah, you totally are. And that's okay because that's your bias and you have the right to have your bias. But there are a lot of things that you may not know. You may know by now, if you follow me on Twitter or you've seen people post about this. Um, and this is of course the most uncomfortable part of this talk for me because I have to come on stage and say, listen, you've made judgments about me because of the way I look, right? I sound all American, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traveling, you realize just how hard that is sometimes, sounding so American. Uh, you can see that I'm not blonde, I'm not blue-eyed. You can maybe hear a weird twang in my voice sometimes, and like, where is she from? I'm from the ghetto. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't know these things looking at me. The other things you wouldn't know is you wouldn't know that I've been homeless. Ooh. You wouldn't know that I'm very anxious about this right now. It's good. You wouldn't know that I struggle with depression, that I have anxiety, that seven or eight months ago, I couldn't even leave the house to go to the grocery store. Right, you wouldn't know that because you don't really know me. And even if you do know me, I'm probably not gonna tell you that because you're a stranger. I just told you, so now you know, but. But the point is, is you don't know. You don't know what someone's background is. So you have your bias and that's okay. You have to not overestimate your bias. Know that it is your own and that someone else is going to have their own and that is what makes your human connection. Accept that your bias is there. Accept that you don't know what someone had for breakfast that day, or if their kids kept them up all night, and that their problem or perceived problem could have absolutely nothing to do with you. And you can't change that person. You can't change someone else's perception of you or the situation, but you can control your own actions. All right, so, oh God, being human is hard, right? We have all this bias, we're kind of mean online, like what do we do with that? All right, well, we could talk a very long time about that, but I don't have a lot of time and y'all were like, I don't want to meditate, so we won't talk too much about it. But I think there are a couple of things that we can do that are fairly tangible and I think relatively easy with practice, right? Because everything takes practice. So the, the first is just listen. You are all doing an amazing job of listening right now. And I know that I'm kind of like chaotic to watch on stage. I bounce a lot, I move a lot, I talk really too fast. But you're doing a great job listening and hopefully you're active listening. So listen to what someone says. Take a moment, 
Understand that your first immediate reaction is based upon your bias. That it's really probably not about the individual, but about how you're feeling in that moment. Especially online, you have time to react. When we're texting, it may not feel like you have the time, but how many people, I do this all the time. I've been doing this for a long time. I used to be a retail manager of organic mattresses. Why does everyone laugh when I say that? There are such things as organic mattresses. So I used to be a retail manager, and I had to learn. I was very young, and I had to learn to pause, which is hard when someone's like, I want that order right now. I'm like, ah. So I would write an email, and how many people do this? I'm, I'm upset. I'm writing this email, or I'm even not upset. I'm just kind of annoyed that day, and I backspace. I just delete all of what I wrote. How many people do that? No, you more should do that. Really, it will help. Just write out the first thing, right? And then think about it again. That's one way. If you're online and you're in a chat, just take a moment, take a breath, think about what you're gonna say. If you are on Reddit, Stack Overflow, Twitter, and a newbie is asking a question and you think that question is stupid because who doesn't know that? Let me tell you. Someone doesn't know that or they wouldn't ask the question. And asking a question is hard. So give someone the benefit of the doubt. Give them more background. Give them a resource, right? Just be a little bit nicer. So in the context of our community, the other thing is a little less tangible. Telling you to listen and pause, that's easy. It's not very easy for everyone, even for me sometimes. But I think another thing that is very, very helpful in the context of building a community and building a healthy community, because there's a difference, I think we'll talk about that in our panel later, is showing gratitude. There are so many ways to show gratitude in a non-ironic way. And I'm gonna say it, when you can't think of anything nice to say, think a little bit harder, right? Thank you for pointing that out to me. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me. Even if you don't agree, you can still appreciate that someone is speaking to you. I appreciate that suggestion. I will look into that. Thanks for pointing it out. It's just, you know, just listen to that thing. Just that thing, because those people who are newer to the community, who are learning how we interact, need to see that and hear that. They need to see that we say thank you. The, the key is, is that no matter how someone comes off to you, if they come at you hard, it's okay, right? What matters is your reaction, because that's all that you can control. So, let's get deep. I am grateful for every single one of you. Without all of you, and especially like all of you all over the world, probably growing your own communities, doing your own things where you are, like growing gopher communities at your companies, I wouldn't have a job. And I've had a lot of jobs before, but I wouldn't have a job that I love. I wouldn't have one that makes me happy to go to work, which is rare. That is not very common. So I am grateful for each and every one of you. The Go Project is grateful for each and every one of you because they would not exist. They would not have jobs. Filippo wouldn't have a job. Yeah, he's on the Go team. He would probably still have a job, but he wouldn't have a job on the Go team, right? Without you, this open source project would not be a project. So I hope that together we can be intentional about the way that we standardize our communications to each other. You'll decide if we utilize empathetic collaboration. That's not my decision, that's all on you. And I just hope that the next time, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe a week from now, you just think before you say something to someone. You just take a moment, take a breath, and think. Thank you.
do, do I, do, oh, oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, do I take questions? I don't know if I take questions. Do I? Oh, I do. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you can ask me non-thing. You don't have to ask me about empathetic collaboration or being nice. Like, you don't have to. Oh, thanks. Oh, hey. 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 Well, nice to see you again. Good uh, to see you, too. Actually, I, I have one question that's a kind of a, a tricky question. I'm really sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, we all witnessed uh, the... Go modules conflict that affected Sam Boyer yeah. and the Go Dep guys, etc. And I must say that the core team was at, at least trying to be polite on that. Mm -hmm. But we um, we can perfectly see that like we're this weird voice. You're in the middle. That's why. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you can perfectly see that at some point the Go core team had to take over a situation, and it looked pretty bad, mm. right? So how do you conciliate mm. the necessity of the goal core team actually steer the project mm -hmm. and the community energy of trying to put this organic, chaotic effort on Go itself, mm -hmm. right? Not so much of Go, Go Dab because Dab had the package management committee, mm -hmm. but once in a while, when you 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 you, you check the, the the issues in GitHub, you see people trying to bring things into the language, mm -hmm. and the Go core team actually squashing them, mm -hmm. right? So, how do you conciliate that? Wh wh where is the empathy from the Go core team to mm -hmm. the rest of the community? Mm -hmm. So I will ask a question to that question actually, which is not to you, but is to the community because traveling, I've realized something profound, or at least to me it was profound. How many people actually know what he's talking about? Okay, less than half. So my answer is a really, it's a very political non-answer because I'm pretty sure these are being recorded, right? The questions, yeah. So <laughs> I'm just being honest, all right? I'll at least be honest with you. Um, most people have no idea what happened. And when I first gave this talk, it was in response or my internalized response to that situation because it, it was very upsetting on all sides. And then I gave this talk with a little bit of reference to that situation and I had 15 people attack me after. Like, what's going on? Why are you talking about that? What's going on? What happened? And I'm like, y'all nosy. Uh, one is that not everyone sees those little squabbles that happened on Twitter, right? Not everyone knows about it. So assuming that the community has this negative pallor to it is not healthy, right? That's not a healthy way to look at it. Assuming that they do know about it, right? then I think that there's, there's different steps to be reconciled. I think one of the biggest things that happened um, in response to depth to that situation, to kind of the, the, um, the concept of like trying to contribute to the core project, which is different than contributing to Go, right? Because Go is made up of thousands of projects, not just Go core. But specific to Go core, that's why uh, the, the design documents were um, released, why we asked for feedback from them, why we're trying to be really transparent about where GoTo is going, um, or rather like the transition into the next evolution of the language. Um, and I think that, that the Go team is human. <laughs> And it's really important to, to realize that, you know, like I am probably one of the more social people on that team. Just being real, just I'm probably one of the more social people. And so uh, it's important to realize that most people on their team are not like me, that they would not know how to answer that question. They'd be like, oh my God, I don't know, what do we do, what happened? Um, but really that was an example of being human. And, um, and in terms of, and tell me later if I didn't get to all of the pieces of the question. In terms of the, uh, the Go Core and contributing to Go Core itself, it is very hard to get something accepted through Go Core, 
right? And sometimes it does feel squash. And I agree that that um, Andrew's team, Andrew Vonvarte, who's Filippo's is on, they are doing um, efforts in regulating that exchange between contributors and the Go team because that's just a human way of showing empathy. Um, but that more specifically, when we looked at how many um, external contributions come from Go Core versus um, external contributors, sorry, that was a really weird way of saying that. But basically, when we looked at um, PRs that were accepted, it, it wasn't exponentially geared to, toward Go Core. The issue is that it's, it's picky, period, because a programming language has to be super solid. You can't make a lot of changes to Go or you risk breaking the world. Oh my god. You, let's just say you risk breaking Kubernetes. Yeah, how many people are terrified at that concept, right? Yeah, I see. Thank you for the hands. So that is why it is so hard to contribute in terms of the actual technical contri contributions. And I agree, we're working on the rest of it. I hope that was decent without getting me fired. Question, more questions? Hopefully not that hard. Any more? Don't ask me about generics. You want to, I see you, don't ask me. I'll just say pass. All right, I'm available on Twitter, Cassandra Royd. Uh, CLS, C as in cat, L as in Larry, S as in sandwich, because I love sandwiches, at golang.org is my community email. I'm on Slack, but not often, because it's really crazy, and uh, so don't ping me on there, because I won't answer. Uh, that's, I mean, yeah, Twitter, email, that's all. All right, thank you, Cassandra. Thank you.